Well, let's start off with a look on the currency uh, side of things. The Naira is sitting uh, between the 151 and 152 bracket. It's been pretty flat uh, within the range of expectations. We had the central bank, though, initiate uh, some depreciation of the currency last week. This week, again, failing to meet demand for the greenback at its bi-weekly uh, bi auction. Uh, and so some weakness coming through on the back of that. What's your outlook on the local currency front? Uh, well, if you ask me, Alicia, uh, I think the central bank has this plan and they're sticking to their plan. Um, if you ask them, they will say they are still well under 150 because uh, they are at 149 right now. And uh, the implication of that is that they are not taking the 1% admin charge into consideration. While the market is actually taking the 1% admin charge into consideration and then taking uh, the effective rate of the central bank uh, auction above uh, 150. Right now we see the interbank rate at uh, the 152 levels. I, I think central bank not meeting demands in full have affected this and uh, there have been lots of demands in the market. We've seen corporates doing some dividend remittances, we've seen corporate doing some loan repayment and all this pressure has been going to the central bank. And so for the central bank to calm the market and to be able to show confidence in the market, I think they need to supply more dollars to the market. Mm -hmm. And another factor that have contributed to this is the fact that most of the oil, uh, the demand, I mean the supply from the oil company this month is significantly less than what it was the previous month. And uh, that's why we've seen these levels remaining at uh, the 152 levels. But if you ask me for my outlook, I think sometime next, uh, next week we'll start seeing most of the uh, oil majors coming back into the market with their flows and the likes of the NMPC, the likes of Shell coming out with their volume. I think uh, we'll see the Naira retracing to the uh, 150, 151 levels. To what extent uh, is the market viewing the kind of uh, selling we're seeing or the auctioning off uh, that we're seeing from the central bank as a kind of central bank uh, uh, intervention coming to the fore? Well, I don't think uh, the market is seeing it in the negative light in the sense that they are not seeing it that the central bank does not have the uh, dollars to supply to the market. I think they just seen it as a way of central bank trying to just have a steady supply to the market because they also have their own figures they are looking at. They also speak to some of these oil companies and they believe whenever they're expecting the oil company, they tend to uh, reduce the amount they have on offer. But in terms of confidence, in terms of strength, in terms of perception, I think think they have uh, enough dollars in their reserve to be able to cater for the supply, I mean the demand in the market. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at uh, the upcoming MPC meeting. Uh, we heard that it's been scheduled for uh, the 21st. What are your broad expectations of that? Well, for the MPC coming forth on the 21st, if you ask me, I don't see any major surprises. I don't see uh, them cutting interest rate levels. Even if they are going to tinker with interest rate, maybe they could just play around the corridors. But changing the NPR rate, it, it will not make any uh, meaningful impact at this moment. So I see them leaving it flat. If they're going to discuss anything major, I, I would suspect that maybe the AMCON issue and the AMCON story is what is probably going to top their agenda. Yeah. That's just my own view. Of course, many waiting for detail on that front. On the economic front, though, I mean, we had a central bank governor, uh, Sanusi, yesterday saying that the Nigerian bank lending has not been uh, growing as quickly as it should be, meaning there's a limited risk for inflation uh, moving forward. Uh, what's your inflationary outlook for the country? Because uh, the bank is certainly hopeful of achieving single-digit inflation by the end of this year. Uh, trying to achieve single digit inflation uh, by the end of this year will be a tall dream. But if you ask me, my outlook is that it's probably going to come down. And uh, rightly said, the lending pressure is not there at the moment because there are still a lot of other risk issues that uh, uh, the bankers are looking at. And so the lending is, uh, is the growth rate is not as significant as uh, the general public would have as, uh, expected. But I, I think we're going to see a downward pressure on inflation, but single digit will be a tall dream. Well, on uh, the bond market side of things, Samuel, uh, there seems to have been some movement from long uh, to short in positions where people have become risk averse and are concentrating now on the short end. How are you viewing that space in particular? Uh, well, I think um, 
the market as it is right now, we've seen a lot of move from the long uh, end of the yield curve to the short end. And that's because there's been a lot of uh, negative perception on long-term yield. We've had people make comment that uh, the, the yield on the long end is below inflation levels and you don't expect any rational investors to invest in such. Yes, I agree with this uh, line of thought. And what that has done is to uh, cause the investors to run away from the long end. And right now, uh, they've all concentrated on the short end. And another factor that is swelling the market is that recently we got a draft exposure uh, from the uh, PENCOM, that's mm -hmm. the National PENCOM Commission, telling us that uh, in, in, the, in the draft guideline we saw that they say any bond above seven years will have to be inflation index. Right now we don't have inflation index bond and what that will surely do is to uh, make the guys who are supposed to be the investors in the long end of the yield curve run also and put more pressure uh, on the short end of the yield curve. But if you ask me to see the draft exposure, I doubt yeah. if that uh, line would actually pass the final test because I think there are a lot of resistance to it right now. They are all government agency. One part of the government is issuing long-term bond. The other part of the government is saying don't invest in yeah. this long-term bond. It's a lot of, I think there's a lot of contradiction in that. Yeah. And uh, since they all have some same reporting, I guess they will sort themselves out very soon and then tell the market exactly what uh, we should yeah. be looking at and where we should, our thinking should go. But I think that should signal where their thinking is and what they are really having in their well, mind we'll to do. We'll certainly be it's keeping our eyes to, uh, and ears peeled for uh, that kind of development and you know tracking that story as it unfolds. Samuel, thanks so much for your time. We're going to have to leave it there for today.